Hello and welcome to Fast Talks. My name is Mikko Tuomala. I'm the marketing director of Fastems and the host of the show. Today in the studio we have our head of innovation, development and research, Harri Nieminen, and uh, one of our product managers, Janne Kivinen. Would you guys introduce yourselves shortly for the listeners? Harri. So I'm Harri Nieminen and I have worked for Fastem since 1996, so pretty long time. Yeah, I was born and a, a bit before that. But <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, around so, those times. Uh, currently I'm heading our innovation development and research activities. Okay, that's quite wide, wide portfolio. So what do you do besides the automation um, profession? You mean my hobbies? Yes, uh, something like that. Mountaineering is one of my favorite, and um, scuba diving as well, and eco marathon. Wow, that's that's something. All right, Janne. Yeah, hello. Uh, so I'm Janne, and uh, I'm the product manager of Fastems Digital Offering. So, which at Fastems means different. Uh, so, first solutions that help manufacturing companies to be more productive. So that's my my role at Fastems, and uh, I have worked here uh, since 2013. So uh, quite a many years already. Also, okay, you're also born before 1996. <laughs> I started a bit. Yeah, a bit. <laughs> a bit before that. But uh, what do you do um, besides the automation profession? Uh, well, I run, and then uh, I, I ride a mountain bike. So so o- yeah. outdoor activities, just yeah. like like uh, Harry. <laughs> yeah, that's that's good fun. All right. So the theme of today's episode is uh, future of manufacturing. What changes and what are the implications? So let's face it head on and ask the question of of what changes, Harry. This is actually a very interesting and inspiring question indeed. Um, if we look at the big picture, uh, there are changes happening in two different uh, levels. Firstly, uh, something which is happening inside the walls of single production plant. Um, this change is uh, targeting to smart factories. Okay. Uh, secondly, uh, there are changes going on beyond those factory walls uh, in network level. And in this case, we are discussing about hyper-connected factories. Okay, I was always um, already about to ask what that means, but let's let's spare that for, for the future. So you mentioned two levels, smart factories and hyper-connected factories. So let's begin with the smart one. Uh, what does it mean? Um, smart factory is actually considered to be an uh, important outcome of the ongoing a famous uh, fourth industrial revolution and in practice smart factories highly digitized and connected factory where all bits and pieces like devices systems and humans um, within the factory are able to communicate together and walk to uh, work towards common goal okay sounds quite hol- holistic development there. So Jana, what's driving this this trend or development? So the main driver uh, is is definitely the the customer need because customers are are asking more uh, more from the com- companies. So they want more uh, uh, individual customized products and then uh, for the manufacturing companies this means that they must be able to manufacture different kind of parts and 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 really a broad range of different kind of parts so so this is this is the driver uh, manufacturing companies must do something to to be able to outcome this challenge okay so well what then changes in practice when smart factories are, are happening the trend is is, is coming and Jan, you can continue on that okay so uh, if we if we start uh, thinking this this uh, change from the from the machining point of view, which is uh, quite familiar for for fastems because we are working in that domain strongly. So the maybe the one of the most practical ones is to to uh, utilize more and more five axis machining, because then the five axis 
machines or, or machine, machine tools that have more access uh, are able to produce really broad range of different kind of parts and 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 uh, uh, in addition to that do it very uh, efficiently okay so machining changes uh, what about other things like uh, additive manufacturing Harry um, additive manufacturing as such as a production technology is uh, of course strong enabler uh, towards economically feasible lot size one target it's also unleashing other other benefits and am is uh, now finally finding it ways uh, ways to shop floors and uh, actually the first larger scale industrial implementations has seen the daylight um, however we have to keep in mind and that actually additive ma- manufacturing those metal am processes are actually quite complex and those include multiple process parts like uh, heat treatment uh, support structure removal uh, quality assurance and in many cases also subtractive process parts meaning basically machining and all needs this needs to work together fluently yeah what it comes to industrialization um, the important question is how to integrate all the needed process parts together to system level entities in a clever way so novel system level solutions are definitely needed in future okay uh, what about offline programming Janne? okay uh, the meaning of of offline programming is 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 coming uh, more and more important uh, in the in, in the in the manufacturing and like Hario already told us the for example the additive manufacturing it's it's rather complex uh, process yes and uh, and it's the same thing with the five axis machining for example so so the the, the machinery is is getting more and more complex the processes are getting getting more complex and and for this or in order to tackle this challenge we uh, we need definitely offline programming so that we we can prepare uh, new work pieces new 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 processes offline without interrupting the the actual production and then we can we can quickly uh, bring those new parts to the process when needed so so that's that's the driver for uh, for using more and more offline programming in the in the in the smart factories in this case yes so this then develops further into the theme of digital twins and you might going to continue on that one so how yeah. are these linked to yeah, offline sure. programming and the digital twins yeah so then uh, we can think about the digital twin as a step up from the offline programming so so then uh, it's it's really uh, something more uh, compared to these traditional uh, offline programming techniques like like cam programming uh, so so uh, there, there there's also a lot going on around the digital twin at, uh, today so many many companies are investigating uh, and, and maybe also u- utilizing digital twins already yes. uh, but the, but the terminology is also a bit challenging because because I have seen that quite many companies nowadays like to like to call a di- di- uh, with the term digital twin something that is not actually a true uh, digital twin all right so let's 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 define it how, how do you see what what is a digital twin then okay so uh, the, the the definition is that uh, we have the physical objects or the the the, the, the living uh, system somewhere a real production system yes. for, for example and then we have uh, the the digital counterpart for that and uh, in order to to be a digital twin we need the data sync synchronization between this real life object and then the uh, the digital counterpart so so yeah. so this is this is really the one of the cornerstones of the digital twin and it has to go both ways both ways yes yeah. so from from the physical world to the digital world and then from digital world to the to the physical world so so that's the definition okay that cl- clear things out at least for me uh, why would um, industries use digital twin manufacturing industries what's what's the point of it actually is it just a fancy technology or yeah so uh, yeah it's a fancy technology first of all but the, of course there must be a customer value behind this 
and uh, maybe one of the of those low hanging fruits is the training because because yeah. new personnel can be trained using the digital twin because it's it's really like a one one to one match to the to the real system so then uh, the new personnel or even existing personnel can be trained using this digital counterpart without interrupting the the actual production and it, it's it's like a virtual sandbox for for testing yeah. different kind of things yeah like safe try and error Mode. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and then uh, the other point is is all kind of simulations and optimization. So so uh, we have uh, complex manufacturing processes, and uh, and yeah. we want to try different things. That what if I change this? What what? How does it affect to the the, the outcome? Yeah. And uh, and uh, and digital twin makes this uh, really easy because because you can get the data with the syn- data synchronization from the real system mm-hmm. and take that as a, as a starting point and then start simulation and, 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 and do these what if uh, simulations. Yeah, and it's safe. Yeah. The stakes are not very high yeah. there if things go wrong. Exactly. And uh, then the third thing uh, is, is maintenance. So, so then the maintenance can be, can be also uh, optimized because, because we can also... Uh, with the digital twin, we are able to predict some of the machine breakdowns, for example, with with uh-huh. advanced uh, analytics. So, so the the maintenance is is, is also something that that uh, or where the digital twin can be can be used. How about product development and design? Is that something? Could you de- utilize digital twins? Yeah, definitely. So, uh, so digital twin can also provide great uh, feedback and and and. Uh, information for the for the product development so then the the companies who are who are developing new products they they know better how the customers are are using their products and then uh, this gives chance to make the products even even better so if if they can monitor the use of the digital twin right in that some circumstance yeah. Yeah. yeah of course yes so 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 like like i said there are many different ways to to use the digital twin and i think uh, all the all the companies and customers are still finding ways how to how to actually create the value and and, and yes. take the value uh, uh, from from digital twins yes so you mentioned training simulation um, earlier on introducing new parts to production without disturbing disturbance maintenance product development do you see what are like the top things that are actually happening right now what uh, I think the, the the training and then the this simulation uh, is 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 something that uh, where I you have seen practice. Yeah, yeah, where I I have seen already practical uh, practical uh, uh, implementations yeah. implementations. Yeah. Yes, and and also we are we are focusing at the moment at fast times heavily on on these subjects. <clears throat> okay, uh, that's about uh, it for the digital twin part. Um, uh, then there's another big big term uh, around this uh, smart uh, smart factories, uh, which is is MES or manufacturing execution systems. And uh, could you hurry give a brief to the listeners w- what is a MES and how how it's relevant here? So MES simplified. Yes, something like that. So MES uh, stands for manufacturing execution system, yes. and in practice it it is an information system which monitors and tracks. Uh, the manufacturing process on the factory floor. Um, it works uh, in near real time yeah. um, to en- enable and control various elements in, in the manufacturing process. Yeah. Could you elaborate the relationship of, of MES to the smart factory? Like you mentioned before that um, things need to be connected, devices need to be connected, and the production, the manufacturer mm-hmm. needs to have everything working together, one purpose. How is MES related here? Yeah. So, so basically, why we need yeah. uh, systems yes. like uh, manufacturing execution system is yes. um, MES is nowadays uh, kind of a hot topic in manufacturing sure. industry, sure. and for for a good reason, actually, um, due to ever cre- increasing uh, customer expectations, like Janne already mentioned, um, the level of complexity in manufacturing is very high. And it's uh, actually ever increasing still. Um, and applying traditional lean principles in, in manufacturing, it's 
not enough as such. Instead, um, in order to live with this increasing complexity, uh, you have to implement Lean and then also get support from different information systems like MES. So we kind of need tools for implement implementing Lean or something. Yeah, Similar. that's that's yeah. true. Yeah. Okay, so the summary of, of smart factories is begin to emerge here. So we see uh, interconnected devices, uh, software platforms to support it, uh, digital technology, techno technologies like digital twins supporting that. Uh, Jan elaborated and and one purpose for the whole whole factory. Now, if we um, extend from that, from talking just merely of of a, of a single factory into a network of, of factories, which mm -hmm. there of course always is because there are subcontractors and, and and buyers and makers and it there is a tier network. So, Harry, how do things proceed there? What's 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 beyond this smart factory? Mm. Beyond the smart factories, we can find hyper-connected factories, and it's definitely one of my favorite topics. All right, let's and, let's, let's, hear, let's hear it. Yeah. What 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 is a hyper-connected factory? So, factories. So basically, hyper-connected factories goes uh, beyond one shop floor or building in in practice. Um, in here, processes and players in whole supply chain are connected, and communication takes place over the whole network. Yeah. Okay. So, why is this relevant? What? Well, it might be obvious, but still, you could elaborate a little bit. Why? Why hyperconnected factories are happening? Um, building smart factories it's very important thing, but in long run, it's not enough. And the reason is simple. Uh, as you mentioned, manufacturing takes place always in some level of networks. As a manufacturing company, you have always uh, material suppliers, you have subcontractors, um, you have logistic partners, yeah. and of course, your customers. Yes. And uh, in these networks, we have to be able to work well together in order to reach our common, common goals. Yeah, serving the customers, of course. Yeah. So what kind of things does this mean actually in practice and what, what are going to change? What things are going to change or how is this visible? Um, technically speaking, uh, this means basically transparency enabled by data sharing between different players in the manufacturing network. Yes. And when we size this opportunity, uh, we can enable uh, network level traceability chains. Uh, create uh, situational awareness in yes. those networks and someday extend also those uh, manufacturing operation management solutions to the network level. In practice, uh, you would example know in real time when parts needed in your assembly are arriving yeah. or you know that uh, proper uh, quality inspections has been made and quality requirements fulfilled. Yes, this means situational awareness, right? Basically, yes. Yes, and then the network level transparency, um, how would you define that? You already kind of did, but just to make clear, you talk about it, that having the clear picture in the, in the um, tier mm -hmm. network of your sub-suppliers. Sub uh, you can actually see uh, things which are enabling, enabling value for you and for your customers over the network. Yeah, okay. So when is this coming? Uh, what, what could be kind of the earliest signs of who are the early adopters of, of hyper-connected factories? Mm. Is this real? Well, uh, hyper-connected factories are widely discussed today. But uh, to be honest, uh, larger scale implementations are still quite rare. Um, we have large enterprise customers who are clearly going towards uh, this direction and we are developing solutions together with them. Yeah. Uh, I've understood that trust has a, has a very major importance in, in what comes to hyperconnected factories and how how they can be implemented. Could you elaborate that, Harry, a little bit? Mm. Trust is uh, vital also 
in in here. Um, we can say so that the most part of technical enablers needed for hyperconnected factories are already there, at least to some extent. Yes. Uh, connectivity, data security solutions, and such. Um, the main challenge in here is to try trust between different players in the network. And this is actually pretty challenging and complex thing. Yes. Because uh, trust is at the end in us, in human beings. Yes. And it's, it's, it's very challenging. Uh, data ownership and data usage are typical issues in, in this context. Mm, this comes also back to the customer value and return for for it. What, what kind of ways have been uh, manufacturing companies that we work with? Uh, is there any ways or you see in the industry that how this trust challenge is, is being kind of solved? Are there any, any ways forward? It sounds like it's, it's a big, can be a big challenge, but is there any, any way to overcome mm. that? There are actually multiple, multiple ways in, in here. Uh, firstly, data exchange, it must be transparency because uh, transparency itself will be increasingly important in, in building trust. Yes, that's, that's one of the major things for sure. Um, how could a single factory then, we're th thinking about now smart factories together uh, with hyperconnected factories, that might be the next step, but nevertheless, uh, there's a single factory. How could they move towards being a smart factory or even a hyperconnected mm. factory someday? What are the key steps? Or you had some in mind, what, what, what could a single factory do? Um, there could be actually three takeaways in, in here. Um, first, invest in agile, future-proof solutions. And when making investments, uh, pay attention uh, to capabilities like connectivity of devices and, and systems, as well as capabilities of your partner solution supplier. Second thing could be don't fall in love with technology. It's only a tool at the end. Uh, concentrate on enabling customer value and keep also human perspective uh, like employees uh, experience in, in mind. Yes. And Third thing is uh, consider always also continuous improvement. Yeah, sounds like there has to be a kind of a vision to drive this forward, right, in the manufacturing. To take the tools that are available in the markets and, and transfer them, them into something that actually provides customer value, like you said. A vision is definitely needed. It's not enough. Yeah, it's surely uh, not enough. But yeah, something. also actions. Actions also, yes. Okay. Um, it's time to wrap up this episode. Um, things evolve um, in, the, in the sphere of, of manufacturing and, and uh, clearly towards smart factories and even towards interconnected factories or, or hyperconnected factories. Uh, to learn more about uh, the world of factory automation, uh, you can check our other um, podcasts, our YouTube or our blog at fastems.com slash blog. And at this stage, I would like to thank, thank you all for listening. And thanks, um, Janne and Harry, for being with me here today. Thank you very much. Thank you.